Hey everyone and welcome to my next video and in this one I will continue as the third video in the series for arguments for C++ in bare metal embedded and this is kind of an introduction to C++ anyway so as I said in the previous video I will continue with compile time and cons which is quite an important topic and quite a huge selling point of C++. You might be familiar with const also from C, but it was actually introduced in C++ back in 85 and it was only added in C four years later. It's called the type qualifier because you add it to the types and the only one other is the restrict and the volatile. And uh, what const does, it when used with a variable declaration, then that variable cannot be changed later. This is very important for using some variables in the process of your code so you don't accidentally overwrite them or when you're especially using function that take a pointer as an argument and if you're not gonna change the data pointed to by the pointer then that data should also be const as well and the argument here is if it can't be const then it should be because this also prevents a lot of errors so the argument for the pointer is this one using the west side const of the star and here we having a pointer that points to a constant data this way if you have a function that has this kind of signature for a pointer so when the caller uses this function knows that the function will not modify the data pointed to by the pointer the pointer can be changed inside of the function because it's just a local variable but in terms of data it cannot be modified and this is a huge guarantee so this way, const is really useful and you should use it more. And I'm really looking at a few particular implementations of C libraries, even in modern days like the Hall library, which lacks const everywhere. And for that, I have a few examples. On the top, on line 2 and 3, I have the declaration for the Hall your transmit taken directly out of the Hall library. And as you can see, it takes a raw pointer to pdata. Now, if you investigate this function, you know that the function will only read the pdata, but will not modify the data pointed to by the pdata. But from the function declaration, this doesn't look like it. It looks like the function might modify and be potentially capable of modifying the data. Now, we know that it has to modify the huart because it also holds the state of the peripheral, but there's no need for modifying the p data when it doesn't. So why is there not a const between the star and the uint 8t? So the implementation that you might do is something like this one on the line five. It takes a pointer to a constant data and even further, this is a constant pointer to a constant data. So the message, which is the pointer cannot be changed inside of this function and also the data pointed to it cannot be changed. And if you want to use it with this function, you have to cast it to uint 8t pointer. So you remove both of these consts. This looks fine because you know that the hal your transmit function doesn't do anything with the data pointed to by the message pointer. But for using any other function, this is really not reassuring. So you have to every time go and check the implementation yourself if you can. But if it's closed, then you don't know. And on the bottom, we have an actual example from one of our code bases. At the end of our API for sending data over the UART, we had this implementation for the hal called write uart which accepts a string view which is just a struct with a point with a char pointer and a length and because the char pointer is a pointer to a constant char data then it cannot be modified the data and because this function takes a row pointer and a uint 8t type firstly we have to use the reinterpret crest remember from the previous video to transform it from a char const pointer to a uint 8t const pointer and then use the const cast to remove the const as well. And then we can use the begin inside of this function. And this is the actual command that was put in by the implementer at that time. So whenever you see in the code base the reinterpret cast and the const cast, it raises an alert because the reviewer of the code has to verify if you know what you're doing. And here we know what we're doing, but it's really frustrating to have to use this kind of thing. So now to some actual upgrades and additions, the C++ back in 2011 added a new keyword called const expert. It's a declaration specifier, much like inline, and it's used when you're declaring a variable or declaring, in this case, also defining a function. What it does, it tells the compiler that it is possible to evaluate the function, which it has the const expert declaration or the variable. And by evaluating those two at compile time, you might reduce the need to add that function 
to the final executable, you are able to do some compile time checks on the result of those functions and on those variables. And this is really powerful. And the powerful thing is, yes, these variables and functions that are const expert or capable can be used where only the compile time constant and constant expressions are allowed. And this is also a requirement for function arguments as well. So const expert functions, all their arguments also have to be const expert or uh, compile time constant or literals or something like that. And also for the public functions, they're required, as I mentioned before, to have the implementation in headers as well. So you have to join the declaration and definition into one. This is because the headers are evaluated at compile time and is the only way the compiler will know the whole body of the function in advance before evaluating it. Now a few more specifications. There are a lot of restrictions that were put in place when this was implemented in 2011, but over the years this has really been lessened more and more. So cost expert is now used everywhere, even in the standard library. Now I just want to point out a few uh, implications when using const expert in certain contexts. So when you use it with an object declaration, so we're declaring a variable or a non-static member function, then it also implies const, which is a good replacement because when you're using a const expert declaration with a variable declaration, now that variable is a constant. And if you check the compile time, now it's a compile time constant. And when you're using with a function or static data member, it also implies inline, which means that the function can be inlined into your code. So even if it's not evaluated compile time and the code is not eliminated from the actual executable, then you're pretty sure that even if it's a big function, if it's const expert, it's going to be inlined. There are a few limitations on which type of variables can be used as const x per context and the definition for it is called the literal type and it is a long definition and I encourage you to read more on it in the link down below. But uh, it basically means that any built-in type and a few uh, built-in type compile time arrays and trivial structs, you can use them with const x per almost always. Now let me give you a few examples on cost expert. This is quite a packed slide, but let's go through it. On the top, we have a definition and declaration only one of cost expert int pow2. So this is in context of the all of this code existing either in the same source file or if this definition and declaration of the pow2 is in a header. What it does, it just takes an argument called a, it's an integer and multiplies it by itself and returns it. This is how we use the const expert for the functions and it's on the leftmost side, much like inline or static. Then we have just a declaration for an existing pow2 non const expert function, which does the same thing, but it's not const expert. In the first try on the val1, we use the pow2 with a value of 5. Now this may be evaluated at compile time, but we're not really sure. But what can be probably sure, if it's not evaluated at compile time, the pow2 function will be inlined in here. On val2, we're using the non const expert function, so this is always gonna generate the pow2 non function somewhere in your code, and then it's gonna branch to it, calculate the value, and return it into the val2. Depending on your compiler settings, the pow2 non can be inlined or not. Here on val3, we're using const x both for the variable declaration and the function declaration. And in this case, this is gonna be evaluated at compile time and it's also optimized. So if this is the only instance where the pow2, which is a const x for function is being used, then the actual implementation of the function will not be included in the final build of the executable because it's not needed as it was evaluated at compile time. Now val4 is similar to val3 but the argument is the result of a non-const expert function. So in this case, we have pow to none, which is a non-const expert function, which takes a literal, but the result of this function will be evaluated at runtime. This means that because this argument is in runtime, the pow2 cannot be executed at compile time. And because we're trying to force the val4 to be evaluated at compile time, the compiler will gonna be an error. The same is on the val5, where we just straight up try to feed the non compile time constant into the val5, which we require to be a compile time. So the compiler is gonna give us an error. The pow2 non is not const expert. 
And as I said before, the const expert variables that are able to be evaluated compile time are the same as any literals or compile time constant or numbers or strings. And in this case, we can do a compile time check. And this one is gonna fire because val3 is obviously 25 and this check is gonna trigger. And this one is gonna pass. So this one is gonna print val3 not in bounds. And this one is gonna print nothing. In the bottom example, you can see that we are actually using the result of the pow2 function. But because this function is const expert and its argument is also compile time constant and the 25 is also compile time constant, then we're gonna be evaluated at compile time. There could be many more examples of const expert, but I just want to guide you into the world of const expert and be sure that in the future videos I will show you some concrete example where const expert really is handy. Much like const, it should be used whenever possible, but because of the limitations of needing to provide the function in the header, the entire implementation of the function in the headers, it's mostly used for some uh, classes or for some implementations of certain drivers. Now for some lighter topic, uh, I want to introduce you to bool, which is a new type introduced in C++. You also have it in C, but it's not a type, but it's a macro provided by this third bool.h library. Whereas in C++, the bool is actually built in type that can have hold the value of true or false, which are types and not a defines, because in stud bool, true and false are just two defines, and they can be implicitly converted to and from ints, and in C++ you can prevent that with a curly bracket implementation. Now the standard says that the size of the bool is up to the compiler implementation, but usually, at least with GCC on ARM and x86, it's usually just one byte. And the bool is now the resulting type of every boolean comparison between objects, so when you're doing the logical end or less than, greater than, not and equals, the resulting types from the type of operation will be bool always. And this is all on bool. And now for finish on this video, let's just check on the operators. Now the operator is just some symbol that performs an operation between uh, variables or just one variable. And you all already know them from C. And these are some like math, bitwise math, a Boolean operation, the pointer arrow and the call and bracket operators. So these are all operators that are also present in C. But the thing in C++ is that C++ treats these operators as independent functions and not just one built-in mechanism in the compiler. And this is where it gets exciting because now you can use operator overloading, as we discussed it in previous videos, to also make the same operator compatible for different types. And now this means that you can add your own implementation for a particular operator for either your own structs or your own piece of data. C++ also adds a few operators and some of these were added as lately as C++20 and yes, you can also overload a comma. I encourage you to read more on these operators and I also want to point out that some operators are a bit special because they're actually operators and not just keywords. This also includes the cast operator, so the static cast, reinterpret cast and const cast. As I said in the previous videos, they're like function but actually they're operators, which is partially true. Now let's give you an example for operators and let's say we have a complex which is a costume struct which has two double values one is a real and one is the imaginary and they're both initialized with 0.0. .0. And now let's clear two variables called a and b. a will be default constructed with the default value 0 and 0 and b will be constructed with values 1 and 2. Now let's add a definition for the plus overload operation. What this means is that this is a function. Now when using operators you have to abide by the signatures. In this case you have to use the words operator and then the operator on the right side. And any operator that you have you have to put it over here. But the rest is like a normal function. Then you put parentheses or the first argument is the length head side of the operation. And on the right argument is the right hand side of the operation. In this case the operator plus will be used between two types of complex and then it will return a new complex. So in this case, if we declare a complex C equals to A plus B and A plus B are both of type complex, the result will be a C equals to one and two. In this case, the implementation will just return a new struct complex where we add the members of the two input structs. 
The same could be for something like a multiply operator, where on the left hand side we have a, our own complex data type, but on the right side we are multiplying with a double. And for that we're just returning a new complex where we multiply the double with both of the members. So in this case, if we were to declare a complex variable d equals to b times 55.0, this would multiply both of the values of b with 55. And the last example, it will be the divide equals operator. And in this case, the only left side is the actual variable, our own custom type, and the right side is again the d. And in this case, the operator doesn't need to return anything. In this case, we're taking our custom struct by reference, so not by constant reference because we want to modify it. In this case, we just divide by the both of the members, re and imaginary. And in this case, after this operation, the value of b, which is by default 1.0 and 2.0, will be 0 0.5 and 1.0. Now, there's many more things to say about operators, as well as the function overloading. We saw the operator overloading, but also the operators and function overloading will come handy later when we'll be discussing structs and classes as well. So this is just a preview window, so you can go ahead and look a little a bit into it yourself. This is it for this video and the next one we're gonna jump into namespaces. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!